All right, and welcome in to episode one of the Ball Boys podcast. I'm finally not alone after um, month months of searching, something like that. We got a co-host for me here on the College Kids Experience on the Follow the Action channel, the only place where you could watch the Ball Boys podcast on YouTube. Got myself, Dylan Mel, and we got, despite what it says on the Google Meets right now, <laughs> we got a <laughs> Nolan Soffer. Um, as you know, in case you don't know me, avid sports fan, and I'll piss you off real quick. I'm a Yankees fan, Eagles fan, and LeBron fan. Come for me in the comment section. None of it makes any sense. I swear it's all got backstories. Maybe we'll talk about that in a later episode. But Nolan, big Philly guy, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, so what's up, my man? So I'm from Florida, actually. Uh, born and raised, been here for 28 years. It's uh, been, uh, you know pretty good nowadays you know i mean growing up they were not doing too well so it's always good to support them now yeah. that they're doing pretty good but yeah so i'm a huge philly guy um family's all from there so i was a huge philly fan growing up still am like die hard uh went to penn state so kind of still had that pa blood in me yeah and uh, so pretty much I'm a huge phillies fan eagles flyers penn state sixers um, so those are my five teams, ride or die, and we're going to have a lot to talk about them in yeah. the next couple of podcasts. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure if uh, you wanted to compare this podcast to uh, Undisputed for sake, whatever, I have a feeling that in the comment section, I am going to be compared to Skip Bayless, just because <laughs> the beginning of our audience, at least, will most likely be Philly predominant fans. and. Listen, sometimes I got to hit you guys with the hard truth, and today might be one of those days, and we'll get to the Sixers in a little bit, but we got to start here with Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. They're in the NBA Finals, and full disclosure, we're recording this before Game 4, but but we got a topic here that has evergreen value, you could say. Um, if the Nuggets win this title after Giannis gets bounced around one, Joel Embiid out in round two yet again. Steph Curry out in round two. If the Nuggets win, is Nikola Jokic the best player in the world? Not a lo not just the best center. Is he the best player in the world? And, you know, I'll let you begrudgingly go first because I see that, you know, I know with a lot of Sixers fans that Embiid-Jokic rivalry, it's not looking too hot for the Joel Embiid side right now. Yeah, so, I mean, you hit it on the head. Um, kind of having to admit this right now is it's it's pretty tough, you know, and I'm a huge Joel Embiid guy, and we're going to talk about that later. But, I mean, if he wins the chip, he's been killing it this whole playoff run. Um, just had a triple-double triple, triple -double last game. Um, I, I, I would say, yeah, because you can't really put anybody over him right now. I mean, to be honest, is I think the only guy that you could really make an argument for. Um, Steph Curry, you know, he's he's Steph Curry, but Jokic is just killing it right now. Um, and Bede, you know what happened with that. Yeah. So you can't really say him. And I think those are the four guys. Maybe Luka, but he's not there yet. Didn't even make the playoffs. So, I mean, exactly. that, you disqualify yourself there. And maybe exactly. you could blame Kyrie for that. But if you're not, if you're <laughs> yeah. not in the playoffs, you can't be the best. I mean, Thank the NBA, know. if you're the best player in the league, your team will make the playoffs. Yep. I mean, you know, I don't mean to bring everything back to LeBron, but LeBron made the finals with Booby Gibson and Zodrudis Elgaskis, okay? So, Luka, like, you should be able to make the playoffs with Kyrie Irving, especially when there's a play-in and 10 teams now. And um, I am very adamant that if Jokic wins the title, he has to have the crown of best player in the league. Giannis won his title now two years ago, so it's not even just a last-year thing. And then now that would mean Giannis has been bounced in the playoffs twice. Does it look better for Giannis now that Miami's in the finals? Like, absolutely, because you could argue he got beat by the second best team in basketball. And Giannis has the injury thing. But the thing with Jokic is there's no weakness in his game anymore. And a couple years ago in the bubble, when the Lakers beat them, they took advantage of his big weakness. Lack of foot speed for a big man. Anthony Davis was able to finesse around him. Obviously, Anthony Davis isn't the player he was in the bubble, but Jokic absolutely dominated him. And it hurts to say that as somebody who was, of course, rooting for LeBron in the Lakers, 
But that was an absolute mismatch on both ends of the court. And he is far and away, in my opinion, the best offensive player in basketball. I mean, a seven footer that is the best passer in the sport knocks down great difficult shots. We've watched it in the finals. We watched it in the Western Conference finals. And he is a hell of a rebounder. He had 30, 20 and 10 in the game three victory where you could argue their backs were against the wall. Now you get to Giannis. What's his weakness? Free throws and late game scoring because you got to be able to make them at the line. Joel Embiid, it's health and winning, right? Then you get to Curry, defense. It, Jokic really doesn't have a weakness right now. I'd be shocked if Miami won this series. I mean, really shocked at this point. I feel like that game three sucked the life out of them. You know, maybe you guys have already seen game four, but my bold prediction that I put out there today was that this series is over in five. I don't think that the Heat win a single game at this point. I think it was a statement game from Denver. And the statement is that Nikola Jokic is the best player in basketball. And I love where we're at with the sport, especially even though I'm a LeBron guy. The Cavs Warriors finals years ago, like you just knew what it was. You knew what it was going to be. We've now had, what is it, three or four straight? No, three straight finals with six different teams. We had Buck Suns, Warrior Celtics, Nuggets Heat. And if you go before that, we even had Lakers Heat. So seven of the teams were different. Miami, the only consistent at this point. And with that being the case, the best player in the world is going to change a lot. And I think, again, going back to what LeBron and the Warriors did, LeBron made the finals nine straight times. There was no debating who the best was, right? The Warriors were there because they're so well run. There's so much, what's the word, variance in the league now. It's just anybody's for the taking, and the crown's going to switch a lot in the coming years. I think Jokic has every right to have it, but I think I wouldn't be shocked if Giannis took it back next year, if Luka starts coming for the crown, if Curry went on another run, or, you know, even Wembenyama coming up. I mean, that guy's, all things health considered, going to be a beast. Or even Embiid. You know, if Philly makes the right moves, he could come for that. And speaking of the Sixers moves, we're at a point where, with Joel Embiid's injury, history, his age, and now with the team state, the title window that they had could very well be closed. And I'm going to reserve my opinion on that because you are the Sixers fan. I'm going to let you talk about... What exactly the Sixers got to execute this offseason to keep that title window open? But I'm going to hold you to the answer can't be trade for Damian Lillard. That cannot be the answer. (laughs) I know. Obviously, we all know if Dame goes to Philly, the window's back wide open. But if they can't get Dame, he doesn't want to leave Portland. What would you do if you were Daryl Morey to keep this team in a contending state with a Bucks team that's going to be back with Giannis? Andrew Holiday, a Celtics team that will have Tatum and likely Jalen Brown. And if not Jalen Brown, they'll have a Damian Lillard-esque player. And Miami, who knows what they're going to do. Now the Knicks emerging, the Cavs seem like they're a forward away. What would you do as Daryl Morey to keep up and keep the title odds alive? Um, I think the big thing nowadays, like you see with the Nuggets, um is depth and i think in order to really help joel Embiid with his injury history and the whole team performance you have to add that and i think the first step to do that is to get rid of tobias harris and the thing that sucks about him is he's an awesome guy um character wise everything you would want in a player he just does not show up in the playoffs and i mean he did show up in that game seven against boston i'll give him props for that but in general, he just hasn't really gotten to that. So I think that's your first step into improving the Sixers. Um, so I don't know who you would get for Tobias Harris, maybe just offloading the contract and you know adding some uh, guys here and there. Um, Harden's the big question mark, and I think it's hard to really answer that question if you don't know who's going to be on the team with him. Um, like you saw, Chris Paul got released, and um, there's – 
been rumors that he might be going to Phoenix, which would be really interesting with KD. Yeah. Um, I don't really see that. I think it's either us or um, Houston. Um, but I think based off what I think is going to happen, I think he'll be back. I think with Houston is kind of a leverage to get more money with us, which I don't know how I feel about that. But I think you're kind of at a point where you don't have the luxury to get rid of Harden to see what else is out there. Would you, know? you? So you think the best course of action is to bring Harden back? I think you would bring Harden back, get rid of Tobias, and add a couple more pieces to help whether it be Seth Curry's out there, Harrison Barnes is a possibility. There's other guys at a backup center for Embiid. I mean, yeah. um, Andre Drummond was an awesome backup when he was with the team. Yeah, a really backup happened. big has become seriously one yeah. of the most important positions in basketball. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a couple years ago even when the Sixers no. had Drummond, but it has become so valuable to have depth at the big position. And we see it right now with Miami. That's why they're struggling against Denver. They are yep. just mismatched size-wise. And when Bam Adebayo's not on the floor, Cody Zeller is getting barbecue chicken yep. by Nikola Jokic <laughs> right now. And that's it's what it cool. is. It's, <laughs> it's just not even close. Those minutes are terrible. I... Do disagree with you though, and I'm glad that I disagree because I think perhaps maybe I open the door and you come to my side, or we just disagree and let the comments decide. I think James Harden's got to go, and I think right now a lot of emotional Sixers fans will agree with me, but I think even basketball fit wise, money wise, it's not going to make sense. James Harden is not worth 40 million dollars a year to this Sixers team, neither is Tobias Harris. And Tobias Harris is a great third, fourth option, but he's making two option money yeah and that's his biggest problem and that's why sixer fans it's well tobias played good tobias did play good for what your expectations of tobias harris are the problem is tobias harris makes damian lillard ask money yeah. and the fact that i could flip tobias harris and shake milton for damian lillard and it matches contract wise that's a problem and that is a huge part of the sixers problem right now they have too much money invested in guys that don't get the job done for them when it matters. I think Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid, those are the only two guys on this team that are untouchable. I think they would, and size-wise, in the backcourt, maybe this it wouldn't be great. We're going up against a Jalen Brown or a Drew Holiday. But Fred Van Vliet joining the team with Nick Nurse and letting James Harden walk. Fred Van Vliet's not going to demand the money that James Harden would have. So now you can go get another forward like a Harrison Barnes, like a Kyle Anderson. And I really would like Kyle Anderson because of his playmaking ability. But this team needs to be built around Joel Embiid. And you have to surround him with shooters. You can't have that paint clogged up. It's got to be Joel one-on-one -on -one and four guys out. Fred Van Vliet, and this is crazy. I heard this on um, the You Know Ball podcast. If you took his three pointers made last season and he kind of had a down year it would be the fourth best ever in Sixers franchise history they just okay. consistently have not had three point shooting and yeah. having Fred Van Vliet a guy who is he the best defender no but is he locked in yes and we know that he's locked in under this head coach defensively then you have Maxi, who's only improving a Kyle Anderson type Joel Embiid and then you just surround it with other shooters. Like you said, maybe you bring back a Seth Curry. Uh, you know, keeping a D'Anthony Melton off the bench could be nice. A Andre Drummond off the bench would put this team in a position. And maybe towards the second half of the year, you start limiting Joel Embiid's minutes. I mean, if he can't make it to the finish line, what's the point of getting a high seed? Maybe you sacrifice being a top three seed and are willing to take a four or five seed and just having Joel play 28 minutes a night for the second half of the year after the all-star break. This is my same advice for the Lakers, right? When it comes to LeBron, why is he playing over 30 minutes a night? Wherever Chris Paul ends up, don't let that guy play more than 30 minutes a night in the regular season. These are guys that if they were healthy, their team may have gotten to the finish line. I mean, if the Sixers had beaten Boston and were up 3-2 and Joel Embiid was healthy. Who's stopping him on Miami? We're going to we would have seen exactly what we're seeing with Jokic. And 
Who knows then? Like, Philly could have won the title, theoretically. If So, maybe they can run it back with Harden. Maybe I talked myself into that there. But you have to make sure your star players are healthy come the postseason. And for the Sixers, they have to make sure that they get guys that can perform in the postseason. Yeah, and I'm a huge advocate for that. I was actually talking to my friends about that, where I was just like, you know what? Like, I think Embiid really played hard this year to get his MVP, took all those minutes, and it showed in the playoffs, you know? And I'm like, for next year, you got your MVP, rest for 20 games, take play 50 to 55 games, get like the five seed, and you'll be really good for the postseason, which is what he has to do. And I'm also a huge guy uh, for Fred Flynn Fleet. I think he'd be an awesome addition. I don't know. Um, you know, I think it depends. It really depends on who else would be on that team. But I think he'd be an awesome addition to to the team. You have Nick Nurse, obviously. Yeah, defensively, um, I'm a little concerned. Yeah. But with the effort that he puts in on defense, mm -hmm. I would argue that him and Harden are at least the same level defender. It's not like yeah. you're trading some otherworldly defender in Harden. You're losing Harden's playmaking, but I think at this point in their careers, Van Vliet's a better scorer. I mean, Harden gets the foul calls in the regular season, but come playoffs, that doesn't happen. Especially yeah. on the road in Boston. You're not getting that call, man. No way. Mm -hmm. Especially not with your reputation. Yeah, and I mean, they have P.J. Tucker on defense, if Embiid on defense. I'd bring you know, him so back, I too. I'd bring P.J. Tucker yeah. back. Yeah, and I was a huge guy when they got him. I was like, yo, he's going to really show up when they need him. And look what happened against at game four. Like, he was huge. And that if, whole series if you showed. ran out there, a starting lineup of Van Vliet, Maxi, Kyle Anderson, P.J. Tucker, and Embiid, you got four shooters out there. P.J. Tucker, a good defender. Kyle Anderson, a good playmaker. And he has very high basketball IQ. And then that backcourt of Maxi and Van Vliet can get buckets. I, I don't think the Sixers need to go get another superstar talent as much as they just need to build a proper team around Joel Embiid at this point. And I think it's very similar to what we're seeing with the Nuggets, right? They built the right team around Nikola Jokic. And I'm not saying Jamal Murray's not a great player, but I think Jamal Murray certainly benefits from playing with Nikola Jokic. When you pair up a scoring guard with a guy that can distribute the ball well, that's what happens. Kyrie Irving, when was he his best? 2016 with LeBron. Mm -hmm. Jamal Murray, when is he his best? When that big out there is Nikola Jokic. So, Fred Van Vliet could play to an all-star level again if he was out there with a Joel Embiid who dominates attention. Iris Maxey, who's only getting better and will dominate attention. It would allow him to really open up his game. And in Toronto, we saw him, you know, struggle at times this season from being that number one option. Look at it when Kawhi was there and they went on their title run. And he was the third option behind Kawhi and Siakam. He was cooking in those finals. Yeah. And that's why when you're able to be the second or third option on a given night, but you have that talent scoring level that a lot of these guards have in the NBA now. That's what leads to them looking so good. I do want to shift gears here, though, because this is called the Ball Boys podcast, not just the Basketball Boys podcast. And yes, we got some football news. Vikings Pro Bowl level running back Dalvin Cook released today. We see this a lot more in the NFL. Running backs are just a dime a dozen. So if we got to mm. start paying a guy, let's cut him out of here. Now, there's a lot of rumors about where Dalvin's going to end up. Down in Florida by you, Miami is a very popular choice. I'm hearing, I'm hearing from my sources that the Jets are in play. Brees Hall coming off that ACL injury, having a two running back room. You know, it wouldn't have been my first option, but sources are telling me that it, it it's it might be out there. And then you got, you know, potential with the Buffalo Bills, pairing with his brother James Cook. They need a real consistent running game. In a perfect world for you. Where does Dalvin Cook end up? Yeah, so um, there's another team in the running, which I think would be very interesting, which is the Denver Broncos. So Denver, um, to me, is kind of the dark horse. You know, they have um, Javante Williams. He's hurt. I don't know when he's supposed to come back. 
Yeah, they're um, hoping for week one, but I've already I been hearing it. reports of that being pushed back and P. Ryan being the guy. And, you know, Dalvin Cook's better than Samaj P. Ryan. <laughs> yeah, so you have Sean Payton there. You know, he wants a high powered offense. Russell Wilson knows he has to really put on this year or else he's done. Um, and you have a really high powered offense potentially if you could get Dalvin Cook on that team. However, I don't think that is the best fit for him. Personally, for me, I'm a huge New York Jets guy this year. I think, first of all, I think they're going to win the division with or without Dalvin Cook. Second, I think if you get Dalvin Cook on that team, you have that one-two power punch with Aaron Rodgers throwing the rock. I think it's a no-brainer for him. If he goes to Miami, yes, he's from there. Yes, that team is stupid with speed. But you run the risk of, you know, Tua's injury history. That O-line isn't. You know, it, it's iffy. But if you're in New York, you know, like, I feel like that's an awesome team to go to. And I think with all the expectations, that's a team you want to go to. In Miami, I feel like, you know, he might get his stats, he might get his numbers. But I don't know how good they will be on the win-loss column with Dalvin Cook. Yeah, so, I mean, we can um, eventually unpack your Jets are going to win the division take a little closer to football season. Because that's a whole different topic on itself that we could <laughs> dive into. But... I don't think it's that hard. I think that Buffalo, it's, listen, Buffalo, okay. I, they have no running game. That is what has separated the Bengals and the Chiefs from them. Your brother is the running back right now that's also in that room. You have the Madden cover Josh Allen, a team with Super Bowl aspirations, and you would be the feature back. I don't, listen, this, these are real world people. And I feel like a lot of times athletes kind of get separated from the real world and we think about them like as if they're in Madden or 2K. <laughs> but the opportunity towards the end of your career, at least the end of the peak of your career for Dalvin Cook, to go play on a Super Bowl level roster with one of the top five quarterbacks in the NFL alongside your brother. I Listen, unless James Cook gets on the phone with him is like, dude... Buffalo fucking sucks, man. Like, I hate it here. Like, then sure. But other than that, I don't see why that team wouldn't be at the top of his list. Unless, and again, it can't be, oh, he hates the cold. He just played in Minnesota. And I know they got the nice new stadium, but he was there before they had the nice new stadium with the heated floors. Yeah. So, for me, Buffalo makes perfect sense for Dalvin Cook. You know, they've won that division, what is it now, the last three years, I believe. So they're in a good spot to win if he believes that Josh Allen, Diggs, himself, Dalton Kincaid, who they drafted, and on the defensive end, you got Von Miller, Tredavious White. I mean, it's a loaded team. And if he believes in them and wants to play with his brother, I think that's the perfect spot for him. Another guy that we're going to be searching for a perfect spot for is Damian Lillard. And I'm going to start here a little bit just because I've gotten some pushback before when talking about Dame leaving Portland. And... Some comments of, oh, everybody wants Dame to leave. Dame's happy there. Listen, if Damian Lillard is happy in Portland and he's happy just being the franchise's best player, getting his, you know, bag and being that guy for Portland, then fine. Stay there. But don't tell me that you want to win titles. Because if you want to win titles, you would have left. It's not about the titles if you stay in Portland. And for me as a fan, Damian Lillard is a top of 75 NBA player of all time, made the team. He is, when he's on, a top 10 player in basketball. His play only rises in the postseason. They've won, what, three or four playoff series since he's been in Portland, and two of them are on Damian Lillard buzzer beaters. So this is a guy who rises to the occasion. As an NBA fan, if I don't want to see a talent like that consistently in the playoffs, consistently in big games... Am I even an NBA fan? Are you? If you're just like, oh, I'd love to see Damon Portland for his whole career. Unless you're a Blazers fan, then sure, I get it. But at this point, this relationship's almost negative for Portland as well. You have Anthony Simon, Shaden Sharp, whoever you're picking at number three. All those guys got to develop. And come next season, Dame's going to be 33. He's still going to be the alpha there. And it's going to slow down the development of those guys having Damian Lillard dominate the ball. And for what? So you guys could be the 10 seed and get bounced in the play-in? And I said this in a video, 
a couple days ago. Unless Portland's willing to package Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp, and the number three pick and go get Dame some pieces, then it's time for these two teams to separate, break up, go their separate ways. Now we get to the question of, well, where should Dame go? And I know I'll let you make the case for Philly. Um, you're going to hate my answer, though. I think a Damian wait, Lillard... Wait, wait. Before, before you, you want to do one, two, three and say if we have the same one? Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know how it's going to work with the call, but we could do it. You want to count All us right. down? You go, you go. All right, three, two, one, Boston. <laughs> we don't have the same one. Let me talk about Boston real quick. I think it's time for them to move on from Jalen Brown. I think that the relationship there in terms of real people is severed. You've talked about trading him for two straight off seasons, and he doesn't like it, which... Fair enough. Um, the two wings thing very rarely works in the NBA. You have to be really uber talented to get that to work. I think the most recent combination of that that worked was LeBron and Wade. And even then, their play styles didn't mesh. It was just you had two of the top 10 players in the NBA at that point, and they got it to work. And one of the guys had to take a step back. And that was Wade, obviously. But with this Tatum and Brown... You have Jason Tatum, who has the skill set of a one, but Jalen Brown has the mindset of the one. And Jalen Brown, it leads to him trying to be that one, and we saw it against Miami. You know, his handle isn't great. He's still really young, though. 26 would fit Portland's timeline way better than Dame. Anthony Simons can be the point guard. Now you're Portland, you're not running that small point guard Lack of defense deficit. Jalen Brown is a defender. He's willing to play the two guard. You got size there. You let Simons be the one. Jalen be the two. Um, you draft that Miller kid with let him be your small forward. You still got Nurkic. You got Shaden Sharp off the bench. That is a good young nucleus there to build around. And if you're Boston, what have you needed for the last, I don't know, since Tatum's gotten there? A true point guard. And a guy that could score at all three levels and take over games late. Damian Lillard is every single box that you need. I think it makes too much sense. And they got to the finals two years ago now. Lost to Miami, who was an eight seed this year. Next year, you're going to have the Bucks only getting better. Another year of development for Garland and Mitchell. And let that Cavs team get a small forward that's not Dean Wade and watch out. Miami, like you mentioned, if Boston doesn't go get Dame, like, you're going to talk about Miami might go get Dame. Philly might add a piece. Everybody in the East is going to try and get better. So it's either keep up or get past. So why don't you talk about Miami getting Dame, what exactly you think the package looks like, and, I mean, they're in the finals right now. I don't know if you have to make a case for how scary they'd be, but you can go on and do it. Yeah, you know, so I think for me, Boston does make a little sense. I just don't see it fitting as well as you think it does, just because I think yep, the first thing is Marcus Smart is there. And I think... I, I feel like he's more of a natural two guard. Yeah, but I, I just don't really see him fitting well with Dame on that team. And I just think when it comes to maybe like fourth quarters, crunch time, yeah, Dame is the guy. But I think they're going to have an identity crisis with him and Tatum. And I just don't know how well that would really play out. Yeah, but I don't we'll think there'll be no crisis. I think Dame Dalla tell him it's Dame time <laughs> and to go sit in the corner. <laughs> hey, 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 we'll see. But, we'll yeah, see. we'll see. But, Maybe that alpha will finally come out of Tatum if somebody tells him yeah, to go sit in the corner. But speaking about Miami, I think I think it's the perfect fit, honestly. Um, Jimmy is doing all he can right now. But they just need that third piece and that third piece being Dame you're talking about Dame Butler and his boy Bam a three-headed beast in the east yeah what's that the so, package of like Tyler Hero maybe Duncan so Robinson Hero, to get the money to work Duncan Robinson a couple of picks here and there um I think that could maybe do it um, I but, think you'd I mean, have to like probably sign and trade like a Gabe Vincent after this postseason. Yeah. Run. But this postseason run could really help Miami to make a move like that because mm -hmm. these guys have played so, as well I, as they could play. Yep, yeah, exactly. So I mean, but even though, bro, like 
you'll have Spolstra with Dame, Butler, and um, Bam. So, I mean, whoever I think they would get shooter-wise, I think they would fit perfect. And they'd still them. probably have Struess, and, you know, they'll just get Struce, some yep. undrafted guy out of a D3 school that'll be a lights-out shooter. Yep. I mean, the Miami way. 100%. So, I think Dame... He just would be the perfect guy, I think, and it sucks because, I mean, a low-key, I feel like the Heat-Sixers rivalry is, like, kind of heating up, Not no pun, but <laughs> it's it's getting really, you know, spicy the past couple of years, so yeah. if Dame were to go there, it'd be an interesting couple Yeah, I mean, Miami year. would be the favorite in the East for sure, yeah. and I might get some pushback here. We might have to clip this and throw it on TikTok. I don't think Jimmy Butler is a one on a championship level team. I said it a couple years ago in the bubble when Miami made it to the finals. People were like, are you worried? I said, absolutely not. Like, well, why not? Miami's good. I said, Jimmy Butler is the third best player in the series. And at the time, he certainly was behind LeBron and Anthony Davis. But even in these finals, and we'll see how it plays out. And I know Jimmy's had a great playoff run. But as it stands, he's been... The fourth best player in this series, Jokic, Jamal Murray, and then even Bam's had a better series thus far than Jimmy Butler. And I love Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's one of the most lovable players in the NBA. So talking bad about him, it's not a popular thing to do. But I don't think he's the one. And you see it in some of these big games. He gets a little passive with the ball and tries to look for foul calls. Damian Lillard will take over in those situations. Jimmy Butler can guard the other team's best guards. You're not asking Dame to do that. I mean, just think about how open this finals would be if they had Dame. Mm -hmm. You could put Jimmy on Jamal Murray, and then Dame gets to just kind of sit around and follow KCP around. So on the offensive end, he's not tired. Like you mentioned, he has his boy Bam out of bio, a good connection there. You give Eric Spolstra another star, just think about what he'd be able to scheme up offensively. And if that team's able to retain Strews, Caleb Martin, and just figure out the bench, that would be a scary, scary sight. And listen, Dave mentioned it on that podcast. They, uh, I forget what it was, but he was asked, oh, not saying that you're going to be traded from Portland, but if you were, where would you like to go? Well, Miami's the obvious choice. Oh, oh, is it? I didn't know. Like, I guess since they're winning, sure. He also mentioned Brooklyn, which I just want to spend yeah. a moment to say, like, <laughs> like, are they better than Portland? Yes, but like, <laughs> you and Mikel Bridges aren't winning a title. You're not coming out the East. So, yeah. I again, I want to see Dame win. Austin, Miami, he'd win in either spot. Philly, he'd win in. Portland, I don't know if Portland came out and said it today or if it was leaked, but Chris Haynes kind of tweeted, if Dame decided he wanted to leave Portland, Portland would be help would help Dame get him to a contender in the East. In the East was added that they won't trade Dame to a West team. So I know there were some rumors floated around about the Clippers, Lakers, Suns. It's not happening. He'd be headed out East, and I think Miami... In Boston, probably have the best packages. Um, you know, the Sixers, obviously, their deal would involve Tobias Harris. And I don't know about you, but <laughs> I'd rather have Jalen Brown or Tyler Hero than Tobias Harris for the Blazers' timeline. Now, going forward, uh, back to football here, I want to talk a little bit about DeAndre Hopkins. He had some meetings with the Titans and the Patriots. And I, I mean, not like, listen, I get it. You take all the meetings you can when you're a free agent, but those being the first two, it's like, ugh. like, what are you going to do there with Tannehill and Mac Jones? D hop. We want to see you win. I mean, you might as well have just stayed in Arizona with Colt McCoy. If that's where you're like, what you're yeah. doing, where do you want to see DeAndre Hopkins end up? Because I think it's very similar to the Damian Lillard situation in terms of DeAndre Hopkins is a top-tier talent that has been on losing teams essentially his entire career that I want to see play in some big games. So tell me, what is your perfect fit for DeAndre Hopkins? All right, so I got one answer, and it's actually a little similar to the Dalvin Cook situation. I got this team winning the division with or without him, um, but I think adding him would really help the case to win a very tough conference and division. 
And I think that team is the Baltimore Ravens. I think adding Nuke with Lamar Jackson, who just got paid, he wants any weapon possible to help him out. So you have him, Mark Andrews, um, the guy they just, just drafted. Um, Zay Flowers. Supposed to be amazing. And you have Odell, too. I don't know his injury history wise, you know. Yeah, but Odell is your I wide think. receiver two or three is way better than one or two. Exactly. So I think if you add Hopkins to that team, it helps you out tremendously. And he hasn't had that number one guy. Plus, you have Rashad Bateman in the back of your pocket. And I'm a pretty big Bateman guy. He got hurt last year, but I think even if he's like your three or four, that'd be an amazing core, especially with all the rumors and Talk and if Odell were to go down way. again, you know, he's just kind of been an injury-prone guy. Yeah. But you still have sure. a core then of Hopkins, Bateman, and Zay Flowers to roll out there. Mm-hmm. I, yep. So I feel better about your pick about the Ravens to win the division than I do the Jets. <laughs> um, when Lamar Jackson's healthy, the Ravens win 70% of their games. So flat out, when the guy's out there, they win. And that's been with Hollywood Brown as his best wide receiver. No disrespect to Hollywood Brown, but DeAndre Hopkins is clearly a level or two above. Even still, his catching ability, I think, is the best in the NFL, especially when it comes to contested catching. I would love that move. I'm a huge Lamar guy. And I do agree with you that if they add Hopkins, they'll win the division in the regular season. We'll see what happens come postseason. I'd love to see a ravens bengals playoff matchup, whether that be divisional or AFC championship. The team that I think DeAndre Hopkins best fits with, and, you know, it doesn't hurt me to say it because I like them, but the rich just get richer, man. The Kansas City Chiefs, their one need that you could argue is a wide receiver one. You got Canarius Tony, who's never shown the ability to play more than six games in a row without getting hurt. Sky Moore, rookie. Rasheed Rice, rookie. Sky Moore's a sophomore, rookie last year. MVS. He's all right, speedster. But man, you give Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, we saw it with Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey. I mean, listen, Patrick Mahomes just wins. But let Andy Reid cook up some plays with them, and the Chiefs might be going back to back. That's all. That's why I'll leave it at. The Chiefs might be going back to back. Now, we're gonna go back to basketball here. Chris Paul. Cut. Not traded. Cut. By the Suns. And I want to point this out. There's a very high possibility in my mind, it's not really being discussed too, too much, that the Suns just bring back Chris Paul and the whole point of cutting him was to save money. They saved $15 million by cutting him. With the new CBA rules, they can't really afford to pay Booker, KD, Aiton, and Chris Paul, and then still have a bench, and then the luxury. There's a lot of nerdy stuff that goes into it there. But... (laughs) Cutting Chris Paul just to save a couple bucks may have been the move. And they may just sign him back. He was already just paid $15 million to be cut. But if Chris Paul were to leave, I personally see him going to L.A. I don't know about Lakers or Clippers, but I see him going to L.A. I think he'll be in that building. Now, the Lakers, it makes a lot of sense. Him and LeBron are boys. This team could use a point guard. If they can get him for the cheap, I'm there for it. The problem that I have with that is now you add another old guy who doesn't stay healthy and to, if you want him to be healthy, can only play 28 minutes in the regular season and he's not great defensively. Unless LeBron's like, I need to play off the ball. It just doesn't make sense for me. Like again, if they can get him cheap, I'm not going to say no to Chris Paul. If you could sign him for two to five million dollars, like it's still Chris Paul. He's still a good player. And he's more likely to have better outputs than D'Angelo Russell did in the playoffs. So I'll take that. But he's not first on my list if I'm the Lakers. The Clippers, you know, it's their favorite thing to be a really good team on paper. Chris Paul, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, all that depth that they have. You know, with all the depth that they do have, Chris Paul really could survive playing 26 minutes a night, especially in the regular season. The only concern that I have for that team is the same concern that I have with or without Chris Paul is, are Kawhi and Paul George going to be healthy? 
Now you just add, is Chris Paul going to be healthy to that same list there? But ultimately, if he signs somewhere, I think it'll be L.A. Obviously, there's potential sign and trades with all those teams out east that we mentioned for Dame. But where do you see Chris Paul playing game one next season? I mean, I've been thinking, and I mean, I think it's going to be the first time ever on this podcast that we'll agree. So I'm going to say Lakers. I think it's just so obvious. Like you mentioned, he's boys with LeBron, banana bo- boys. Yeah. And, you know, I just, he's an LA guy. He was awesome with the Clippers back in the day. And he, you know, um, I mean, I he's, I, again, I think if he had his pick of the choices, he would pick the Lakers. Yeah. It's will yeah. the Lakers pick him and can exactly. they agree on money wise? And so maybe I think, LeBron just gives him a share of Lobos tequila and he signs a bet minimum. <laughs> Who knows? So, you know, I think I just it has to be the Lakers, in my opinion, because I really don't see another team in the league that can really afford him and his age. Um, the only other option, like you mentioned, I think to me, too, is I think the Suns. I think maybe the Suns take him back and maybe they trade Aiton and, you know, see what else they could work around Booker and Chris Paul. Yeah, if they can get and this was a trade that the Lakers had on the table for Russell Westbrook and turned it down last summer. And it was much to my aggression and still is. But if the trade was out there for Russell Westbrook, I'd assume this trade will be out there for DeAndre Ayton. Because don't forget, the Pacers were the team that signed DeAndre Ayton that the Suns matched the offer sheet. Mm -hmm. So the Pacers have interest. But Buddy Heald and Miles Turner for DeAndre Ayton, that makes both teams happy. Miles Turner and Buddy Heald are guys that have been rumored to be out of Indiana for a while. It adds depth. You keep the defense. I'd love it for both parties involved there. And we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Lionel Messi coming over to the States. He'll be playing in the MLS for, I, I don't know their team name, but I'm sure we will. The Miami <laughs> team. Uh, my thoughts and analysis on this are pretty simple. Lionel Messi decided to play the last couple of years of his career on easy mode, living in Miami. Got to respect it. But I don't know if you have any uh, more in-depth thoughts than me. Yeah, no, I mean, it just, it's very crazy because it's local for me. And just kind of seeing that was, like, the craziest thing. Because I know there were a lot of rumors, you know, um, coming to him, bringing him down to the States. Um, and I'm not the biggest soccer guy. I, I, I watch uh, Premier League and, you know, Olympics and World Cup and stuff like that. But nothing, like, too crazy. I'm a huge FIFA guy, but that's about it. Yeah. So, you know, um, but him going to Miami was kind of in the rumor mill for a while. And... Uh, it was crazy because I think with ticket sales, um, his first game um, was about $30 a ticket. You know, you could get them pretty cheap. It was yeah. maybe even $20 a ticket. And now the cheapest ticket for the first game, I think. Like, what, $300? Three, three, oh, I thought it was like 300 six, it gone up, it, It's gone up even six, further. Six. So, like, you could see how much of an impact he is to soccer. And. I think within the next five to ten years, the MLS could be a really huge sport. And it's it's funny because, you know, like you mentioned, like you don't really have a huge interest in MLS or soccer. And for me, it's nothing too crazy. But I think with all these international guys maybe getting the chance to come to the States yeah, and with the World Cup in 2026, I think it could be a huge benefactor into getting this league, like, jump-started. I think there's a huge possibility that after the World Cup in 2026 – Soccer passes hockey as the fourth biggest sport in the United States. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed watching the World Cup this past year. Crazy when final. the when the yeah when the level of talents there and you know it helps when the biggest star wins it, right? Yeah. Especially for casual fans like myself. You know, if the finals had been Germany versus England, like cool, but like I yeah. don't know those guys. I know <laughs> Lionel Messi. And it was awesome to see him get it done. That's all we got for today's intro episode to the podcast. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you subscribe to both the channels, the College Kids Experience, follow the action. If you're not following those guys on Twitter, you are seriously just costing Mm -hmm. yourself money at this point. If you're not following us on Twitter, you're missing out on just cool sports opinions and not not as much of a great offer as money. But, you know, we try. Um Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you never miss an episode. Make sure you comment down below on everything we talked about today. Where does your Dame go? Where should DeAndre Hopkins go? Is Jokic the best player in the world? And until next time, peace out, guys. Peace.